we think about structured training, we talk a lot about easy running, conversational pace, aerobic base building, but what does all that mean? In this video, I'm gonna dive into some of the benefits of that easy pace running, which I refer to as aerobic pace running or aerobic base building. If you follow me on Strava, you'll see that I'll mark a lot of my runs as aerobic, which means I'm running in that target range for aerobic development. Now, there are a lot of different terms and lingo, like I mentioned at the top of this video, but in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about the aerobic system and what the runs do to develop that aerobic system and what it means to develop a strong aerobic base. All right, guys, before we get into it, I wanted to mention the Running Shoe Matcher tool. If you haven't checked that out yet, go to runningshoematcher.com. I built this really cool tool that matches you with the best running shoe for you based on your goals and preferences. So you can put in whether you like shoes soft or firm, if you're looking for a daily trainer, a tempo shoe, a race day shoe, if you need a stability shoe or not, and we'll match you with some of the best shoes out there for you. So check that out at runningshoematcher.com. All right, let's get into it. At a high level, aerobic base building is developing your aerobic system. So to understand what this means, we first need to understand what the word aerobic means. Simply, it means with oxygen. So the aerobic system in the body when we're thinking about exercise is exercise where your body requires oxygen to power your muscles. So aerobic pace running is that zone of running where you're using the oxygen that you're consuming during that run to keep going. And if we think about how we get oxygen, it's in through breathing. So if we run a bit harder, Harder, you're breathing a bit harder and you're requiring more oxygen to run. If we think about at a high level why having a strong aerobic base is important is it's the foundation of our overall running fitness. So before we can add in any speed work, before we can add in any workouts, we need to make sure that we've strengthened our aerobic system. Think about it this way, right? If you've never run before, if you've been on the couch for a year, two years, or you don't have a background in athletics, you can't expect to go to the track and run 400 meter repeats, right? You first to start by walking then doing walk running and then after we're comfortable doing walk running running for 10 20 minutes and finally as the last step that's when we introduce those structured workouts to add more stimulus so that's the way we should think about this right we increase our aerobic base and then we add more stimulus through speed and that's what we do at every level of training right before we get to the next level before we try to go faster we add more to our aerobic base strengthen that aerobic foundation and then we add in some of those other other elements to the training mix. So if we understand that the aerobic system is that system of the body that requires oxygen to run, developing that aerobic system means we're teaching our bodies how to be more efficient with delivering oxygen to our muscles when we run. So building a strong aerobic base means teaching our body how to be efficient while running. So that's really the first key benefit of aerobic base building. We're improving our running economy, we're improving our efficiency, and with running a more aerobic pace miles, we're making it easier for our body to run at that pace. The second benefit of aerobic pace running is actually not related to the aerobic system at all, but it's related to the muscles and tendons that we use to run. The running in that aerobic pace range also helps develop the slow twitch muscle fibers that are super important for marathon running or any distance running. So our slow twitch muscle fibers are by their nature aerobic, which means they use that oxygen to power your muscles. And not coincidentally, those slow twitch muscle fibers are what you're going to be engaging when you are doing distance running. So your genetics determine the proportion of slow twitch to fast twitch muscles that you have in your legs and in your overall musculature. But by running in the aerobic zone, you can develop the efficiency and strengthen those type one muscle fibers. So what Hansen says is that generally people tend to have 45 to 55% of type one or slow twitch muscle fibers, but by training, we can increase that proportion to about 70%. So by running this aerobic zone, we can actually increase the proportion of those slow twitch muscle fibers to become better runners and alter our own physiology. I guess the third main benefit of running in that aerobic range is that you'll teach your body to pull from fat sources rather than carbohydrate sources. So when we think about what is readily available to us, oxygen is the first thing and fat is the second thing. Your body has, no matter what your body fat percentage is, almost limitless supply of fat storage, but a very finite amount of carbohydrate storage. Now that carbohydrate storage in your muscles is in the form of glycogen. If you've heard people talk about glycogen stores, this is exactly what they're referencing. It's that 
carb base that's stored in your muscles and it's why we fuel with things like Gatorade and gels while we're running. It's to replenish those carbs. It's why we do carb loading beforehand. It's again to fill up those glycogen stores. But if we run in that aerobic pace range, we can increase the amount of fat that we're burning in those runs so we don't have to pull from carbs. And we can also push out the point at which our body starts to pull from those carb sources. So a runner who runs 100 miles a week versus a runner who runs 40 miles a week, that 100 mile a week runner is gonna be much more efficient in burning fat. They're gonna have trained their body to burn fat from running in that aerobic zone for so much more time than that second runner who only runs 40 miles a week. Now that means that 100 mile per week runner with burning fat stores, because those fat stores are so much more plentiful, can run for a longer distance and a longer time at a faster pace without getting tired. And that my friends is why it's so important to have a high aerobic base because we increase our general fitness and endurance, and we make it easier to sustain faster paces for a longer time. Now, the key thing here to mention is that, yes, it's great to build the aerobic base. It's great to increase volume because of all these wonderful benefits. But at the same time, we need to be careful about how we scale this mileage. So I did a video about how I personally built up my aerobic base to 100 miles per week. And I did this over a period of, I mean, if we go back to when I started running, over a period of about four years. But I did this from the last year, building up from 40 miles per week to 100 miles a week. And while building this aerobic base, it's really important to be strategic about how we do it because scaling too quickly can result in injury. And this is the biggest risk, right? Because while it is important to have a strong aerobic base, if we have to stop running because we're injured, we are gonna lose a bit of fitness. And all those great gains that we've gotten from building up from 20 miles a week to 50 miles per week or whatever it might be in your case, they'll be lost in about three weeks if we're doing no running at all. So while yes, we do want to scale our mileage, we wanna do this in a safe and conservative way. Another benefit to aerobic pace running is capillary development. Now capillaries are blood vessels. Of course, when you're running, you are sending blood through your muscles. When you're engaging in any sort of exercise, that's blood going into your muscles. If you think about doing curls in the gym, right? You get a pump in that bicep, that is the capillary sending blood into that muscle. Now, when we're running, we're also doing a similar thing. We're sending blood into our leg muscles. And by running in this aerobic zone, we increase the development of those capillaries, making our body more efficient at at sending blood into those muscles. So after a few months of running, those capillary beds can increase by as much as 40%. And that's according to the Hansen's book. Now, as the density of those capillaries increases, so too does the oxygen that we're delivering to those muscles. So again, the key thing here is with the aerobic system, everything we're doing is making us more efficient at burning the fuel that we have in our body. All right, guys, finally, and maybe the most importantly of all, doing this aerobic pace running increases the strength of our heart. And if we think about the reason why a lot of us exercise, it's to increase our quality of life, to potentially increase our lifespan. And a lot of that has to do with the health of our cardiovascular system, which ties back to our heart. So this aerobic pace running in that easy running zone is the sweet spot for heart health. So if we're thinking about building a strong aerobic base, you are increasing not only your running fitness, but you are increasing your heart health, which is one one of the determinants for longevity. Now, I also wanna talk a little bit about how to calculate your aerobic pace zone. All right guys, so to calculate this, you can look at 55 to 75% of your, I know that my aerobic zone is anything below 160. I generally like to be at a heart rate of 135 BPM to 160. However, I've found that as I increase my overall fitness and efficiency, I've been running them a bit slower recently, a bit lower heart rate. My heart rate for a lot of my aerobic runs is more in the 140 to 150 BPM range. So you have to find that sweet spot. Again, another rule of thumb is feels relaxed or conversational pace. So that pace that you feel you can hold a conversation with a friend. And to calculate this, you can also use one of those online calculators. So again, I will link that B.02 calculator that I talked about in that tempo versus threshold video. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you today. This is my series where I break down all these training concepts in the simplest language possible. So if anything is unclear, please leave a comment below.
Hopefully this explains some of those benefits of aerobic base building and why I built my base up to 100 miles per week. A big thing you could do here is over time, just steadily increase that mileage, add 10% per week, get to an area that feels comfortably hard, hold it for a few weeks, and then increase again. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.